you can see I've got my linear rails here. Probably won't unpack these now, but these are uh, Highwind HG, I think 30 millimeter linear rails with the uh, four flange blocks for the two rails. And yeah, those are gonna be going on the main uh, ways inserts. So basically my plan is to have My plan is to have a rail pretty close on this side, I think about a half inch off this face. And then my second rail on this closer insert, I'm gonna have about three inches off this face. Um, and the reason I'm doing that, having them kind of off center, is uh, even though my spindle is gonna be in the middle here, I don't really see myself needing to have my cutting tool passing the midline of the uh, passing the axis of rotation very often I would assume that the vast majority of the work I would want to either be at the midline or further back so by doing this then I'm minimizing the distance for the cantilever of the uh, cross slide plate and then I want this insert or this linear rail moved over so that way I'm minimizing the distance of this uh, simply supported section and um, and I guess it also helps out because my stepper motor is going to be on this farther back side so that'll help so that it's not sticking quite so far out if uh, you know if these were perfectly centered. Um, I'm definitely concerned about getting however many holes it is something like 20 holes all lined up so that way they all you know all the bolts actually fit uh, and especially I want a little bit of play so I can make sure that these are perfectly straight using my uh, straight edge at least as close as I can possibly get them um, So I think what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make a rough line with my dicum here and just a scratch mark for my calipers and then I'm gonna align it on there and then I'm gonna use the transfer punch and do one end bolt and then I'm gonna go and drill that and tap it and then put a bolt through this first hole. And then with that bolt in, I'm gonna go to the far end, put a, use the transfer punch through a hole, and then go and drill it, tap it, put the second bolt in. And then once those two bolts are in, I'm gonna take the transfer punch, transfer punch all the middle holes, um, and then drill those, tap those. And hopefully that will give me enough play um, if I'm close enough so that way I can dial in my rails because I really don't want a bolt that's just barely fitting that forces a bend into my rail because obviously that would completely ruin any kind of tolerances.
All right, so it's been a few days. So I skipped recording most of the grinding since a lot of that has already been recorded. But basically, this whole section is getting decent contact. And this section down here is getting decent contact. And I'm just finishing up getting right here and the end to get those low spots to kind of even out. Um, so hopefully by the end of today, we'll be starting to bolt on linear rails. So I just went back and measured this first rail one more time and found that it had about a five thou dip in the middle. Um, and so trying to figure out why that would be, I'm thinking that it's probably just based on the uh, temperature difference. Today is about 90, it was about 70 when I scraped this flat. And so uh, since epoxy granite has a higher thermal expansion coefficient than steel, I'm thinking that the top stayed about the same length and then the bottom expanded and that caused the whole thing to kind of banana itself. And um, yeah, so now taking this little sample of epoxy granite to figure out what the thermal expansion coefficient is, I just got some measurements for the, uh, for the distance here marked by this dot with a micrometer and uh, took a couple of measurements to get a good reading. And then I'm gonna put this in the freezer and then once it's fully cooled down, measure that again and see if we can get thermal, co thermal coefficient of expansion for that. After measuring, we got about 3 thou less when it was about 50 degrees cooler. So we're thinking the uh, coefficient of uh, thermal expansion is about 0 0.027, thou, 0 0.027 thou per inch per degree Fahrenheit. Um, which is about four times that of steel, which would explain definitely why the lathe was bananaing when it heated up. But now that kind of leads into its own problem. So we went through the math and at 90 degrees, it's going to be out about 32 thou over 40 inches and about 8 thou over 20 inches just because of the way that it curves with the uh, thermal expansion. Um, thinking about going and putting a piece of steel on the bottom here, so that way when it expands, when the epoxy granite expands, when it gets warm, the steel on both sides will try to force it to not expand. So that way hopefully it won't banana quite so bad. But for now, I'm just gonna leave that alone and move on to starting to anchor one of the rails. I'm not going to fully bolt it down and straighten it, but just getting the mounting holes in place. All right, so the first bolt is now in. I've got it centered as best I can with the bolt in the center of the hole. And I've got a caliper measurement on that side that I'm trying to transfer as best I can to the other. Um, and now I'm gonna transfer punch the second hole here. And then hopefully that'll give me a decently aligned rail that I can put the center holes into. Unfortunately, I got 25 millimeter bolts and I really should have gotten 20, so I got to cut all these short. But uh, I've been threading them into a plate and then grinding them up to the plate, which is, seems to be working pretty decently. Nice. 
glad that's on camera so that way after I'm done with this when all these bolts are off by three inches each I'll at least have evidence that it doesn't make any sense this time. If anyone can think of a better way to drill these holes square, please let me know because this thing is absolute hell to use and I'm not really sure of a better way to do it because just drilling straight by hand seems like a bad idea. If I get a hole that's a little bit at an angle, but I can't stand this thing so I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure if I just slipped slightly out of the hole there or out of my mark. I think I'm gonna come drill the rest of these and then come back to that one and when I set the rail on top see if it actually is lined up correctly or not because it should be a lot less of a bother to deal with if it's just a little indentation like that than a full hole.
Ooh, nice. All right, that is all the holes tapped for this first rail. All right, I guess the last thing I'm gonna do now with all these holes drilled um, for today, I'm just gonna try and put all the bolts in and just see what the fit up is like. Just make sure there's not any bolts that are way off that I'll have to fix for next time. It's getting kind of late and it's a Monday. Oh man, it's a Monday. Oh, there's a lot more week left. But that's okay. Sweet, all right. Well, that's all the bolts in. I can still move it forward and back and up and back, not quite as much, but particularly the forward and back, I'm really pleased with. That's more than enough play um, right there. I don't have the bolts tightened down, of course, but that is great news. Um, it'll be a little while until I fully fasten this down and put the other rail in. There's still some things I need to figure out. But in the meantime, it's great to see that that actually works. So, um, yeah, I think that's the end of the video. Have a great rest of the week.